score the football yet. We just have to recalibrate things, I think, on Lamar Jackson. Baltimore's still good. He's still good. But the whole Russell Wilson category, Mahomes category, Aaron Rodgers category, and some of these new young stars. This morning, if you ask me, next 10 years, Joe Burrow, Lamar Jackson. I take Burrow. I'm recalibrating. I'm recalibrating how I think of Joe Burrow playing with nothing, absolutely nothing. And I'm recalibrating how I look at the Ravens, very good football team, and how I look at Lamar Jackson. He's struggling. So the world's best football player, in my opinion, is Russell Wilson. And yesterday he was not good. It happens. It's okay. No reason to go crazy. Uh, I think there is a criticism of Russell Wilson of the Seahawks. They got doused by the Bills. And I think it's a realistic one. And I think it's something that happens to a lot of people. It, it happens to a lot of quarterbacks. Russell Wilson is pressing. He's trying to do too much. Well, I understand that. And I'm certainly not condoning four turnovers. But Seattle rushed for 57 yards. Once again, Seattle's best running backs aren't healthy. Once again, Seattle is playing from behind. Russell Wilson's smart. He has eyes and stuff. He watches every single mobile quarterback Seattle faces has their best game of the year. Cam Newton, best game of the year against Seattle's defense. Kyler Murray, first or second best game of the year against Seattle's defense. Josh Allen was struggling until yesterday. Then he went 31 for 38 and a passer rating of 130. Russell knows that when he faces a mobile quarterback, that guy's going to have all sorts of career numbers. And when you look, I mean, Josh Allen struggled for a month. He threw for 415 yards, 138.5 passer rating through seven incompletions all day. And people were wide open. And we think of Seattle. I do as a Super Bowl team and the Arizona Cardinals is just entertaining. But let me ask you a question. Has Seattle become the Arizona Cardinals? A wildly gifted quarterback, kind of small, but a generationally special player with a bunch of injured running backs, a defense you can't trust, one big receiver, one speedy receiver, and an old guy, Greg Olson and Larry Fitzgerald, that are hanging on and still can make plays. I, when I watched Arizona and I watched Seattle, I see the same team when I watched them play two weeks ago. It's the same team is that, um, and this is no knock at anybody, but Seattle's in a weird spot. They gave up a bunch of first-round picks. They're very top-heavy. They have three or four stars. Bobby Wagner, Jabal Adams, Russell Wilson. I love the Carlos Dunlap acquisition. He's easily their best defensive lineman. He's been there 10 days. But you can see Russell Wilson. The running backs are never healthy. They fall behind games. They can't stop anybody. And if you're a mobile quarterback against Seattle, you're just going to do whatever you want to do. You're just going to do whatever you want to do. They're just not good enough defensively. They've given up draft picks. Uh, Pete's a very good coach and a mentor defensively. His teams usually get better uh, as the season progresses. Uh, but I, I think there's a secret sauce to beating Seattle, and it's a mobile quarterback, and Cam had his best day, and Josh had his best day, and Kyler had one of his best days, and I think Russ Wilson's pressing. He knows it. He's like He can look at the schedule and go, okay, I got to score 35 points to beat Arizona. I, and, and I think that's what it is. And he's pressing and I don't know what it is, but, and it was the same thing when Pete was at USC, maybe he practices too hard. His teams are banged up a lot. They can't keep a running back healthy. They're on their third and fourth and fifth running backs. So I do think if they get healthy, that's a very dangerous team, but, um, it's a shootout team. And those teams don't generally, it's hard to win a Super Bowl, Even if you have Russell Wilson who talked after the game. We just got to get cleaner. I think that's the thing about this game more than anything else, rather than trying to make up reasons or whatever. You know, I scored 34 points. You know, we, we, we're pretty good offense, but I think that, um, you know, we can be better. You know, and today we needed to score 42, you know, so that's the reality today. Listen, Tampa never fought back. They made adjustments. They made it competitive. And frankly, if they'd have made two stops in the entire game, they would have won. So, but I, but I think there is, I think Pete Carroll sees what we all see is we can't stop mobile quarterbacks. And so we got to just let Russ throw, let Russ take over. I mean, let Russ cook, yes, but he shouldn't have to be the waiter, the bus boy, the owner, the prep cook, the chef. That there, he's pressing because he has to. And frankly, if you ask guys, you know, to do what he has to do, um, you're gonna have bad Sundays, and they did. Here's Joy with the news. No, 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 no. Turn on the news. This is the Herdline News. Steelers are eight and zero. Oh. 
for the first time in franchise history. Uh, Pittsburgh girl, I wouldn't brag too much about that performance. Uh, I don't know if there's any other teams in the league that right now. I'm pretty sure just one. Uh, they was pretty though. They were down to the Garrett Gilbert-led Cowboys for most of the game. Most. Trailing by as much as 13 points in the first half. <laughs> I got to tell you, though, I... I never flinched. <laughs> I well, kind no, of you felt can't... like, I'm like, uh, they'll figure this out. I yeah. did get nervous, though, when Ben left. left. Yeah. Yes. Uh, they didn't take their first lead until there were uh, just over two minutes left. Uh, the Cowboys did have one last chance to pull off the upset. But Minka Fitzpatrick, what what a move getting Minka Fitzpatrick has he's been. A, he is a defensive playmaker. Yes. Like, he's got an Ed Reed quality. Like, he'll make plays on defense that he's feel almost offensive. always where he needs to be yep. in the big moments. He knocked the ball down the end zone as time expired to preserve Pittsburgh's undefeated season. Yeah. Ben Roethlisberger was 29 of 42, 306 yards and three touchdowns. Garrett Gilbert, 21 of 38, 243 yards, one touchdown, one interception. It was just one of those, one of those games where it's kind of unexplainable, but at the end... Well, it's a win I, column and a loss column, I'll, and like the better team is going to come out on top in a situation. I'll like make this. an argument; it's totally explainable because it's what Pittsburgh's been for ten years. They they play close. They they, they play I feel down. Like they play yeah. They play to their competition. Always, and that's kind of that's why I never trust them because I think you can do that and win nine ten games. But boy, you can't do it against Peyton Manning, Brady. You're not going to be able to do it against Mahomes. I think that's that'll be the. This is why I keep saying I can't put them is a top team in the league is that I know they're talented and I like Mike Tomlin's had a good year but this is just who they be they're, they're defined by playing to the level of competition well I, I still think that they're and I felt the same way about it last week is it's the Chiefs and the Steelers are the best teams in the league and I don't have a lot of arguments and then, this morning. Uh, and then there's and then there's the next level and that starts with the Bucs so we've talked a lot already about that performance last night which is a disaster in the same division though Lamar Jackson has been 0-6 in his career when trailing at halftime unlike the Steelers game I was feeling like this was going to be very bleak for the Ravens and we were going to come in here today having to talk about what's going on with the Ravens and Lamar Jackson they were down 10 to 7 to the Colts in the first half, but Lamar overcame that deficit for the first time and got the 24 to 10 win. Yeah. The victory also gave him a 25 and 5 record in the regular season, which ties Dan Marino for the best start by a quarterback in the Super Bowl era. Okay, so great second half. Let me defend Lamar on something. This is a really good defense. Yes. Okay, this isn't what Tua was facing. This was a really good defense on the road, and he was 10 for 10 in the second half. So let's. <sighs> Like, yeah. I saw a lot of bad quarterback play. What I saw here is a bad first half, adjustments, and a very capable second half. So, uh, let's go back to a number. 30 games, 25-5. and five. Now, do they have a ceiling postseason? Maybe they do. We'll see again. But all I know is I saw a lot of teams yesterday have a bad first half and never not, adjust. Not recover, yes. Baltimore did not play well, came out, and I thought had an incredibly efficient second half. The coach deserves credit, the quarterback, the defense. I saw a lot of teams just quit at half yesterday. Well, that was a fair criticism of Lamar Jackson yes. and the Ravens. He's an 0-6 in his career when he's trailing at halftime. Like, that's that's how that goes. If you, get, if you get up on the Ravens, we've said this the whole time, they can't play from behind. Right. But you only can't do something until you can. So he right. finally got over that hump. It was it, That is a good team in Indianapolis and a, and a good win for them. Yeah. Making those adjustments. Oh, it's a great win for them. And, and, and coming out when yes. and they did not look. They, it's not just that they were losing in the first half. They did not look capable in the first half. Yeah, and they, but in fairness, they had a fumble near the goal line. I, I watched the entire game. So it was one of those. There was a lot of red zone interceptions and fumbles yeah. yesterday it was a weird betting day like this game i actually won and you, you know thank god <laughs> but it was just one of those games where i th i thought baltimore was okay but i thought let's get him to halftime i kept thinking get him to halftime and figure this out because i do believe baltimore is absolutely better than indianapolis this year i do too but we've seen how they play when they get down in the first half he was nine for 13 for 51 yards and no touchdowns in the first half so the fact that they were able to make that adjustment and beat that team is a really really good win for them Great college football weekend. The top five matchup between Clemson and Notre Dame lived up to the hype in Saturday's double overtime thriller. After exchanging touchdowns in the first half, Notre Dame scored first in the second and followed by a huge defensive stop. DJ Uingalele. Uingalele. Well, 
Yeah. Yes, I'm going to get that. Was sacked twice and threw an incompletion to bring up the fourth and 24. And then the final pass fell short of the yep. Lions to give the Irish the win, 47-40. This was Notre Dame's first win over a number one team in 27 years. Let me tell you something. The last two times they played Georgia, they were in the game with five minutes to go. They just beat Clemson. This is an academic powerhouse. Can we give Brian Kelly a little credit? I don't know what. The media is not into him. He's a little gruff. He had a bad start in Notre Dame. I understand it. But when I watch Notre Dame play, this is the most talent they've had since Lou Holtz. There's NFL line play. Uh, I mean, Ian Book's not going to make the NFL, and they're winning. They beat Clemson without an NFL quarterback. Like, Brian Kelly knows what he's doing. There are some limitations, I think, on the perimeter sometimes with them. But when I watch Notre Dame play, I'm like, that is a well-coached team. They're fundamentally solid. They generally take away one of your best weapons. Now, again, Trevor Lawrence Clemson probably beats Notre Dame. But well, I, yeah, but, like, we, we were raving about DJ last week. Yeah. So, yes, obviously, He's Trevor good. Lawrence is the starter, and he is, he is better than him right now.